Welcome to the Virtual College Exploration for All Pennsylvania Students, sponsored by the Pennsylvania Association for College Admission Counseling and StriveScan. PACAC is a nonprofit organization comprised of more than 1,200 school counselors, college admission counselors, independent educational consultants, and other professionals responsible for guiding you through the important transition from high school to post-secondary options. Thank you for joining us this evening. Just a few housekeeping announcements before we get started with Elmira. You can use the Q&A button on your screen on the bottom bar to type any questions that you have for our presenter tonight. Your camera and your microphone are off in this web feature, so he cannot hear or see you. There are many different sessions happening during this uh, virtual exploration. Be sure to check out the full schedule at PACAC, P-A-C-A-C dot org. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within a few days at the same website, PACAC.org. Now, I'd love to turn it over to Troy Gordon and Elmira. All right, so thanks for tuning in. Let me get my presentation pulled up here. Give me one second. All right, again, thanks to everyone here for tuning in uh, and taking a few minutes out of your uh, busy evenings here to learn a little bit more about Elmira College. Uh, for those of you who don't know where Elmira is located, uh, we're in the Southern Tier or the Finger Lakes region of New York. Uh, so we're about a two hour drive from Scranton, about a four hour drive from Philadelphia um, and just over the Pennsylvania border uh, here in New York State. All right, so a few fast facts here about the college. Um, we're a pretty small school, so we have about a thousand undergrad students, and we are proud to welcome students from 25 different states in 13 different countries. So while we are a smaller student body, uh, we do have a diverse student population on campus, which is something we are extremely proud of, um, you know, to welcome students from, from all over the country and the world uh, to our beautiful campus. Another stat we are extremely proud of is that 100% of our students will complete uh, an internship while you are in school here at Elmira. So while, you know, might not be something you're thinking of here as you're in the search process, um, completing an internship is a, is a valuable part of your education. Um, you know, it allows you to network, it allows you to find out which careers you, you think you might be a good fit in, which ones you might not. Um, I will say from personal experience, while I was in college, I completed a, an internship that, that showed me pretty quickly that, you know, that's not the career path I wanted to go into. Um, so that was a valuable experience as well. Our faculty to student ratio here on campus is 10 to 1. So like I mentioned, uh, we are a, are a small campus, um, you know, with you know, plenty of access to your professors and faculty on campus, which is, you know, an invaluable experience as well. Uh, to go along with our internship rate, 98% uh, of our students, our graduates, are admitted to graduate school or employed in their field within six months following graduation. So that internship experience definitely plays into that. Um, our alumni network as well is extremely helpful for our students to gain jobs, uh, which of course is why we're all looking into college uh, in the first place is to you know, really jumpstart our career. Uh, we have a unique travel abroad opportunity, which I'll speak to a little bit later. Uh, so about 40% of our students travel abroad uh, while they're students here at Elmira. And then we do have a large population of student athletes as we sponsor 18 varsity sports on campus, 18 varsity athletic teams. So a little bit about the academic side of things here at Elmira College. So we have over 30 academic majors and professional programs, pre-professional programs. Our average class size is 14 students. Uh, so like I said, a small classes, you're not going to be, you know, jammed in a giant lecture hall where you're able to kind of hide out in the back um, and just slip through class. Professors are, 
are engaging during class, they're asking questions, they're always encouraging for you to ask questions, become you know, part of the discussion in class or even lead parts of the class. Um, our you know, professors really strive to create experiential learning opportunities inside the classroom. Um, so this could be through you know, presentations or research projects. Um, you know, our science students, as you can see there in that photo, are completing internships or um, you know, research projects on campus, both alongside faculty uh, and individually. Um, students have the opportunity to travel sometimes with professors to conferences, both regional and national, to present their research uh, and even co-author papers, which you know, is pretty valuable experience, especially at the undergraduate level. And then our term three experience, um, our academic calendar is a little unique here at Elmira College. Um, so we do have you know, three trimesters, a fall semester, a winter semester, and a spring semester. Our sp spring semester, or term three as it's called on campus, is six weeks long. So it's a little shorter and you're typically only taking six credits. Um, these classes are, are most of the time outside your major. So if you're a science major, but you're interested in history or psychology or philosophy and religion, anything like that, you're able to kind of branch out in the you know, true, true nature of a liberal arts degree and take classes outside your major, really kind of expand your thinking. Um, and this is when students are able to travel abroad as well. So like I mentioned, about 40% of our students do travel abroad while at Elmira College. Um, I will say when I was a student, did not take the opportunity to travel abroad. And it's one of the, the bigger regrets that I have about my college experience is I did not take advantage of that. Um, so I definitely encourage students to, you know, look into those opportunities. Um, you know, spending a couple of weeks or even a month abroad is, is, a, is an amazing opportunity and something that might not come about, um, you know, kind of once you graduate college and, uh, you know, enter the, the real world. All right, so student life on campus and athletics. So we have over 60 student clubs and organizations on campus. So this affords students you know, plenty of opportunities to get involved. All of these clubs and organizations are recognized uh, by our you know, student activities board. Um, so you know, whether you're the president of the club, the vice president, the treasurer, um, you know, the secretary, anything like that is all things that you can build on your resume as well. So the more things you're involved in on campus, uh, the more leadership opportunities you have uh, and the more things that you're going to be able to place on that resume that, you know, future employers will look, um, you know, to see your, you know, leadership is a, is a quality that all organizations are looking for. Community engagement. Our students are engaged not only on campus, but also in the surrounding areas. Uh, so we have students who are volunteering at the local food bank or, you know, cleaning up parks or working at after school programs. Uh, so students are really encouraged to get outside of the campus, um, engage with the community. This also brings in, you know, networking opportunities and sometimes even career opportunities for students uh, who branch off of campus uh, and become involved in the local community. We sponsor 18 varsity athletic teams here on campus. Uh, so if you are interested in participating in NCAA athletics, uh, definitely encourage you to check out those teams on our website and reach out to the coach as soon as possible. Uh, I actually coach our men's golf team. Uh, so I can speak from a coach's perspective as well that we are always looking for interested student athletes. Um, and you know we're never bothered if you send us an email or give us a phone call. Like I said, we're always looking for uh, the next you know, athletes and uh, student to join our campus here uh, at BC. And we also sponsor an esports team. So they're extremely uh, busy right now. They play, um, you know, different games against colleges from all over the U.S. Um, and they're very competitive. We have an esports lounge on campus. Um, so it's a, you know, recognized uh, athletic team here on campus. So um, definitely another way to get involved if uh, gaming is something you are interested in. So a couple of different ways here to apply to Elmira College. I won't spend too much time on this, but our November 1st early action deadline is coming up very fast. Uh, those students who have applied early action will receive those notifications very soon in the, no in the mail and online. So it's very exciting uh, time of year for us as we get to kind of welcome in the newest members of our, um, of our newest freshman class. 
And then we are in a rolling admissions plan. So um, you, know, you can expect a three to four week turnaround on those applications by the time you submit those. Uh, we do expect the Common App or the EC application. Both of those are available online. So the application process, we've really tried to make this as easy as possible uh, because we realize there's a lot going on and you know, applying to, to schools or, or multiple schools um, you know, shouldn't be a, a hang up for you all. So we are free to apply first and foremost. Um, so there's no application fee, fee to EC, which is something we're extremely proud of and have been for, for quite some time now. Uh, and then a completed application file is going to include either that Common App or EC app, along with your essay or personal statement and your official high school transcripts. Uh, we are test optional. We've been that way for a couple of years. I'm sure so, most of you out there, uh, at least some of you have not had the opportunity to take the SAT or ACT for, for a number of different reasons. Uh, so you won't need to submit those scores if you would not like to. Uh, you're not negatively affected in any way. Uh, we truly are test optional. Um, and for initial applications, we are not requiring this year a letter of recommendation. We realize some of you might be in school in a virtual format or a hybrid format and getting those letter of recommendation uh, might you know, create a hang up for your application. Um, so those are not required on your initial application. So you can apply even without that recommendation. I will give a little bit of advice here quickly about the essay or personal statement. I know a lot of students get very worked up about that or you know, it's a, it's a pain point, it makes them very nervous. I will say, you know, be yourself when you're writing that essay. Um, you know, as the person that reviews many application in, each year, um, you know, just kind of be yourself, write about an experience that, you know, might make you unique or, you know, something that you've, you've learned from in your past. Um, you know, don't, don't try to write outside of, of who you are. It, uh, you know, the essay really gives us a good glimpse into who you are as a person and, and the kind of things that, um, you can bring to our, our campus community here. So number one point of advice for that essay or personal statement, just, uh, just be yourself when writing that. So scholarships and financial aid. So first and foremost, the FAFSA or the Free Application for Federal Student Aid um, was made available on October 1st. So if you're not familiar with that or you haven't start that, definitely encourage you to check that out. Um, does have some different fields to fill in, so it can take some time. So the earlier start you get on that, the better. Um, that's what we use to determine uh, need-based aid, which is anything after our academic and merit scholarships. So those range from $8,000 to $22,000. Uh, every student goes through a scholarship review upon applying to EC. Um, so you would receive your acceptance in the mail along with your scholarship amount um, after, right after applying, there's no separate application for you. Always encourage students to look at every possible private scholarship opportunity. So those can come from your guidance office or your school counseling office. Um, you know, always plenty of opportunities out there. It's just really up to you to kind of find those. Different community organizations, nonprofits oftentimes have, you know, different scholarship funds. I know a lot of students will look at uh, those options as well as employers. So if you're employed in a part-time job, um, check with your employer to see if they you know, have any scholarship opportunities for high school students, as well as um, your parents or family members' employers. Um, a lot of times they have scholarship benefits for college bound um, you know, sons and daughters of employees. So definitely check that out as well. Um, you know, don't overlook any of those, any extra scholarship money that you can get. Um, is money that you don't have to pay out of pocket or, you know, look for loans for. Um, any private scholarships can be brought directly in and we take those right to our business office and they're applied directly to your bill. So all of those things, um, you know, check those out. Believe me, it's, it's, it's worth your time um, and effort to kind of look into those. So that just about does it uh, for my presentation here. My Contact information is listed below. Um, my email and that is my cell phone number too. So if you do have um, any questions after the, the presentation here, please do not hesitate to reach out. Uh, a lot of students will think they're bothering us or you know they have too many questions or they're asking a, you know, a silly question. There's no silly questions um, and we are here to help you all through your college search. Um, so by you asking us questions and reaching out to us, 
Um, it allows us to do our job. So um, that's kind of all I have, unless there are any other questions here. I uh, appreciate everyone sitting in and I uh, hope you were able to learn a little bit more about Elmira College. And like I said, I hope to talk to you uh, again here soon. Thank you very much, Troy. And thank you for joining us tonight. Um, when you close this window, there will be a link for a quick four question survey. We appreciate your feedback. Remember, this is just one of many sessions hosted by PACAC and StriveScan. And this one will be on the PACAC website in just a few days. Thank you all so much. And thank you, Troy, for telling us more about Elmira College. Yeah, thank Have you very much. Have a great evening. Bye, Troy. Goodbye. Thank you for putting this together. Uh -huh.